In recent years, social media has become an integral part of all of our lives, just like school or sleep. There are over 500 million users on Instagram, over 313 million monthly users on Twitter, and about 150 million users on Snapchat. Mobile sites such as Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat have become our society's new norm, and we've grown attached to the number of followers on our screen and the amount of streaks that we have with our friends on our phone. The use of social media has significantly changed the way our culture relates to one another, and it has major effects on our society, both good and bad. Social media does have its benefits. It encourages communication, it enhances relationships, and it allows easy access to news about real-world events. For instance, on the Let's Chat page on Snapchat, the creators of Snapchat wrote that they wanted a place to share awkward selfies and funny photos with our friends. Snapchat is about communicating with the full range of human emotion, not just what appears to be pretty or perfect. Essentially, Snapchat helps you share more of yourself with others. You can talk to your friends privately through a series of photos to help express more emotion online. It makes talking online feel similar to talking in person. In the same way, on the Instagram About page under FAQ, Instagram defines itself as a fun and quirky way to share your life with friends through a series of photos. Snap a photo with your mobile phone and then choose a photo to transform the image into a memory to keep forever. We're building Instagram to allow you to experience moments in your friends' lives through pictures as they happen. We imagine a world more connected through photos. Instagram allows friends to catch up and see what their other friends are doing. It is the glue that holds many relationships together. Similarly, in the Britannical School essay titled Twitter, it is stated that Twitter allows users to send short messages to the groups of recipients via personal computer or mobile phone. It combines instant messaging and text messaging technologies with the aspects of social networking sites such as Facebook. Twitter gives people public communication on an easy, accessible site. Others can make jokes or write about their personal life online. Together, these three sites have allowed millions to communicate online without having to move or talk, which provides a convenience factor. Social media enhances relationships because friends and family can stay in touch just by pushing buttons on computers or smartphones. And a study done by Jimmy Wai at ResearchGate, the young adults he interviewed indicated that Snapchat was reserved for the closest interpersonal relationships. Participants explained that Snapchat could enhance family relationships, current friendships, and romantic relationships. Participants stated that it was a way to communicate and remain close with their most important friends. Short, 1-10 to 10 photos can help one person feel connected with another person, even if the two are separated on opposite sides of the world. Snapchat allows silly photos to be shared with their friends in trust, and silly photos can help one feel connected to their friend. Additionally, social media keeps teens informed of the most recent global media. According to the writers at Taylor & Francis Online, Twitter was credited with providing opportunities to stay informed of trends and news. Numerous respondents compared Twitter favorably with their other public domains available to them. Typically, teens aren't really interested in the current news around them. But with sites just Twitter, teens can be more informed of what's going around in their lives. Teens have access now to trillions of documents online. With sites like these, teens can acquire information, enhance their relationships, and connect with others online, which can be considered better than face-to-face -face communication. Despite those useful advantages, there are some general disadvantages that come along with social media, such as bitter and dejected feelings of self-comparison, the inability to focus, and self-obsession. Specifically, Instagram use has been associated with increased feelings of stress and social overload, lower self-esteem, loneliness and depression. Leora Trubb and Lisa Rothenell wrote on ResearchGate, they found that passively looking at others' profiles displaying photos of vacations or social events to which one was not invited often triggers resentment, envy, and loneliness. Self-comparison happens often when one is exposed to a variety of picture-perfect lives on social media. It can cause many depressive symptoms which can hurt a team. Too much social media can sometimes lead to body image issues among teens. Stephanie T. Dahl and Murray J. N. Drummond wrote a document explaining how eating disorders can come about pre teens while looking too much on social media. They explained how negative thoughts can impact how one feels about their own body. For example, they write, Thin, idealized, and in most cases, unachievable images seen in the media have the capacity to negatively affect adolescent girls who are psychologically susceptible to concerns about their body, compelling them to indulge in unhealthy eating practices that are associated with eating disorders, or influence them to turn to invasive procedures such as plastic surgery. Being surrounded by perfection causes a lot of disturbance. 
so much so that sometimes teams will resort to starving themselves to attempt to the same. Grace Holland and Marika Tigerman won a document titled International Legal Service, in which they studied and learned that women who post Fitzperson images on Instagram scored significantly higher on the drive for thinness, bulimia, drive for muscularity, and compulsive exercise. Almost a fifth, or 17.5% of these women, were at risk for a diagnosis of a clinical eating disorder. These women felt they needed to be excessively thin and strong to feel comfortable in their own bodies because of the way that they were presenting themselves on Instagram. They would have never felt the need to change without social media. Likewise, because of the popularity of social media, teens often try to multitask while doing their homework or other activities. But writers at Time Magazine say that multitasking is not as helpful as you might think. While multitasking sounds great on the surface, research shows that this kind of sustained division of attention can have serious and often deleterious effects on the brain itself. A study at UCLA in 2006 found that those who multitasked, using laptops to look at social media in class for instance, actually utilized a different part of the brain than their more focused counterparts. Instead of employing the hippocampus used for memory and learning in the brain, multitaskers use the stratum. The stratum can hold memories quite well, but only the ones used for forming habits or patterns. This is great for learning physical tasks or doing assembly line work, but not for attaining academic excellence. Teens sometimes text while watching TV or go on their phone while trying to do homework. This kind of behavior has caused teens' minds to become distracted and have a shorter attention span. This overall has affected their schoolwork. Jeffrey Mingle Lancaster and Dr. Musa Adams wrote about the toll that social media was taking on students' grades in high schools in Ghana. They found that a majority of respondents experienced negative effects, such as poor grammar and spelling, late submission of assignments, less study time, and poor academic performance due to the heavy participation on social media networks. Effects like these can cause major problems for a student's future. They might not be able to get scholarships to the colleges that they wanted just because they spent too much time on their phone. With all of this viewing of yourself and your friends online, it can cause teens to be self-obsessed. Anyone not in the current generation would agree that millennials are obsessed with how many likes they get or how many followers they have. And with sites such as Snapchat, where the whole purpose is taking a photo of yourself, one can see why we fall into the epitome of self-obsession. A study at Pew Research Center surveyed over 300 teens and learned that 55% of millennials, or 18 to 30 year olds, have shared a selfie on a photo sharing social networking site such as Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. Interestingly, researchers found an increase in levels of narcissism in millennials. Hence, this raises the question whether there is in fact an association between the two. Many have agreed that this question is justified, for even teens themselves have admitted to taking over 200 photos just to get the perfect selfie. With all this self-oriented media going around, it's no wonder that negative effects arise. how much clearer he was thinking. It had been a while since he had had so much clarity and focus in his thoughts. Now whenever he sits down to write, he can do it without the feeling of distraction or procrastination. Jason felt free to change the world and down. Many other people have tried the 30 day break from their social media and the effects were miraculous. They felt more comfortable in their own bodies. They had more time to do hobbies on top of school. It was amazing. So I and Take a break from social media and experience life in a whole new way. Find what you are truly passionate about without the distractions of social media. Thank you.